And uh, what do I want to have on this report? Basically, it's going to be a, a customer list that shows the outstanding uh, balance. In the customer list, let's say that you want to have some conditional formatting be present as well. You want to have, you want to highlight um, all uh, customer names whose uh, balances over uh, an X amount. That's what we're trying to do here. Never been paid off, and you're going to see something at 39 here. Uh, so and hopefully, you can all see my desktop. So I'm going to. So I think that's what you can see. So that's the easiest way, and if not, you can do a report. Sort of my desktop sharing here for a moment. And um, let's actually uh, look at doing this. So, what, do, what, what has to be done? Hello? And very likely. What's going on there? Other time there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, I'm in a meeting. Okay, so I got your message here. Um, and you can say it could have been before. Um, okay, I see. Okay. Well, I guess I'm rushing the break right, right, right now. And that all resides yeah. in the. Um, yeah, in particular, you should all reside. They should all reside in the BS data folder. Back up again. Whenever you back up anything to do with say Jack back intelligence in the shared data directory, there's a folder called BX data. From the X ray. Yeah. Um, do you do that tonight? The um, file. Is that? Yeah. It, there's a file. There's, there's files that uh, that uh, have an extension SVD. Okay. As in Sierra. Yeah. Or Delta. And that file should be backed up. But uh, we'll, we'll go through that again later on. Okay, so how do we get information into Microsoft Excel so so that we can so that we can format it and make it look presentable, so that we can make good business decisions out of it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, using the connector. Once the connector has been established, we can uh, start with the report manager. Normally, when when uh, we train on this, normally we talk about the report manager first. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the connector. I think it makes more sense to talk about the connector. So let's talk about the connector component and what it's used for. <clears throat> what is this connector program? The connector program, as I've stated before, it has two primary functions. The first function of the connector program is to one, is to establish some sort of connection to the database. I won't go into the technicalities of that. But what we're going to do is we're going to establish an ODBC connection to the database. Of the container of the connector is to create what is called a container. So basically, a container is a view of the uh, data that exists within that database. And we're going to do that. We're going to do just that. For example, data warehouse. Each container that is created must have what is called an expression. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to state exactly how that data. Uh, which which data? Okay. What fields um, are going to uh, be available to the uh, the report manager? So let's have a look at this connector component. The very first thing that we're going to this connection component. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create this connection. I'm going to share my desktop. Let's not lose uh, track of what we're trying to do here. Hey, does everybody see my um, my screen? Come on. What we're trying to do is we're you are no longer muted. Microsoft Excel. Ian, uh, all I got is a blank screen. Uh, yeah, again, Ian. Okay, uh, Randy, what I might do? Do you are you um, are you all set on your computer? Maybe what I can do is I can um, uh, control your computer. Uh, sure. Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, should be fine. Okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, just, uh, just uh, take yourself out of yeah. You are now muted. I'll just give you control of my computer. Okay. I really apologize for this, everyone. Okay. So I will make myself a presenter. And just share your virtual machine. Are you running in a, in a virtual machine? No, I'm running on a live, so just be very, very gentle. Okay. Uh, one second here. Let's see the backpack. Uh, okay. Turn my desktop, and then I'll give you control, okay? Okay. 
Okay, sounds good. Um, and maybe I'll try rebooting my machine at uh, the break, and then I can use my machine again so I don't hog your machine all day. There you go. You should be able to click and take control. All right, thank you. Okay, so Sage Pack Intelligence. Under Sage Pack Intelligence, again, there is an icon here called the connector. I'm going to open up the connector and let's have a look at the uh, connector interfaces here. So let me double click on the connector under. Uh, let me double click on the connector icon. We can see the uh, connector UI. The report manager UI is very, very similar to the connector UI. So what I want to do is I want to, want to begin by walking you through the UI here. So I have my objects, all relevant objects that pertain to the connector here on my left hand pane. If I double click on under Sage Act Pack, this is all you're going to see here. If I double click on under Sage Act Pack, uh, basically what I'm going to be able to do here is I'm going to be able to see all of the appropriate drivers that are available for you to access the various databases. Now, we do support two databases. We support Pervasive and we also support Microsoft SQL Server. If you are using a different uh, Database. Sorry, yeah, let me just grab it for one second. I need to disconnect myself from MSN. Okay. Oh. Yeah, my set? Uh, no, just go ahead and sign me out of MSN there. I just don't want any um, CNN messages to pop up. All right, sure, no problem. There you go. Okay, so again, uh, there's going to be two uh, drivers that are of that are of interest to us here. The first driver is going to be ODBC driver for our SQL Server. And the second driver that's going to be of interest is going to be the pervasive ODBC client interface. Although the ODBC driver with AutoDB creation, I'm told, should also work. Now, uh, Randy, are you using SQL Server databases here, right? I am, yes I am. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to begin by double clicking on ODBC driver for SQL Server. You're going to notice that whenever I click on any of these objects, you'll notice that in the right-hand pane under Properties, I can see the appropriate properties that are relevant to the uh, of the object here. So again, if I double click on, or if I single click on ODBC driver, SQL Server driver, these are the properties for the ODBC driver. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on ODBC driver SQL Server. And what I can do is I can see the uh, current connections that exist under the ODBC driver uh, for SQL Server. So there is the Sage Act Pack Auto Connect. Um, I'm going to double click on Sage Act Pack Auto Connect. You can see that these go several uh, layers deep. And under this uh, Sage Act Pack Auto Connect, this is a basically, this is a called a container. This is the actual container here. Uh, I'm going to begin by creating a container from scratch. Uh, but under uh, this container, Sage Act Pack, Again, I can see various uh, c containers that uh, that exist here. Okay, so again, this Sage Act Pack here, Auto Connect, this is the connection to the database. What is it doing? It basically um, tells the uh, database how to connect to it. You specify the database driver. I'm going to specify the uh, username and, again, the appropriate password. If I click on ODBC SQL Server, uh, once more I can see the properties in the right-hand pane. If I click on Show Advanced, I can see, I can specify information as it pertains to SQL Server. For example, SQL style, if you're going to be issuing SQL statements to the database, what you can do is you can specify um, a, a various different SQL styles here. It is recommended that you use style one. Is that by for all intents and purposes, uh, there's probably no need for us to be able to, for us to have to change any of the information uh, that resides in the properties. So under SQL Server, any changes that you make here are going to be uh, universal to all of the connections that um, appear here. So if I was to change, for example, the SQL style from style one to style three, any of the containers uh, that are under SQL Server will be affected by that change. So again, I'm just showing this to you. There's, no, there's probably not any reason for you to change uh, any of the information that appears here. Um, the Sage Act Pack Auto Connect. Again, this Auto Connect, this is a container that comes 
built into the, the free version of Sage Attack Intelligence. I'm going to actually show you these containers later on. What I want to do is I want to begin by double clicking on by by uh, creating my own container. What's my objective? What am I solving for? What I'm trying to do in my Microsoft Excel spreadsheet is I'm trying to create a basic customer list. Now that data cannot appear in Microsoft Excel until I've created until I've one I've created my container using the connector module. And I also have to create my report using the report manager. I begin with the container. The first function of the container is to create a connection to the database. To create a connection to the database, what I'm going to do in my connector module is I'm going to double click on the appropriate driver. In this case, it's going to be my ODBC driver for SQL Server. To create a brand new connection to the database, I'm going to begin by right-clicking on SQL Server, on the SQL Server driver. I can also add a connection, uh, by the way, using the toolbar. Um, but I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to select Add Connection. Now I'm asked uh, for the appropriate uh, uh, connection name here, and I can call this anything I want. Uh, so I'm going to say you can call this Ian, for example. And Randy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to specify the appropriate uh, credentials here for your server. Uh, that assumes that I know what the credentials are. <laughs> Hang on. Um. Okay, so in this case, uh, what's happening here is that I have to specify my server name. If your SQL server is going to be a SQL instance, don't forget that the syntax is going to be server name backslash instance name. Sorry, Ronnie, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Oh, that's okay. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and figure it out. You can go ahead and um, Okay, what you can also do is um because I don't I honestly don't remember what the required two thousand eight requires a complex password and I've got to remember what the password is. Actually what you can do, Randy, is you can actually uh, if you exit out of here if you have all of that saved I was just looking up the server name, so they don't know the server name either. Okay. Using this uh, function here. Okay, so I've created my 
my uh, connection to the database, that connects to the database is called Ian. Uh, in there, I've hard coded my, no, sorry, it's not hard coded, I'm using the auto connection system. So, what's going to happen is that whenever I connect to SAM Inc. or SAM Limited, it's going to use the information that is in that current connection. And again, that's very, very important to remember that um, if you are soft coding your database, um, because of the fact that if you're running the report manager, it's going to look at the data in the current system that you're currently running. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, after the connection has been established, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add what are called data containers. Data containers are, again, a view of the uh, database. So I'm going to pull the appropriate tables from the database. I can choose to specify a table. If I want to, if I want to get data from a single table, I'm going to specify a table. If I want to use a SQL join, it is possible for me to do that as well. So I can enter a, a SQL statement, um, selecting the appropriate tables. If there exists a view or if I wanted to create a view, I can uh, click on view. I can do a graphical join. I can use a stored procedure. Or I can go ahead and enter in the appropriate SQL text here. At the end of the day, any of these that you do, they're all converted into SQL text. What we're going to do is we're going to start, I'm going to start off small here. So I'm going to use table. And I'm going to click on OK. So right now we're just going to use a single table. In later examples, I'm going to show you how to do this using multiple tables. All right, so now I can see a list of all of the tables. How is this happening? Well, because we already have a connection to the database, I've specified the appropriate user credentials. Page Actback Intelligence lists the appropriate tables that are, in fact, available to me. It's a good idea to have the application object models on your desktop. Um, I was going to actually spend a bit of time talking about joining tables here, but I don't think any of us need it. If anybody wants uh, help with that, we can take that offline. So again, this is our customers table, which is our AR cost table. So again, when we do this, it's initially going to be an easy example. In the next couple of examples, I'm going to show you how to join multiple tables together. Okay, so we've um, performed the second step. First step is to establish a connection to the database using the connector. The second step is to also use the connector and to uh, create a container. I've created a container called uh, ARCUS. So I click on ARCUS, again, I can see all of the appropriate properties here. I can see the container ID, which is uh, randomly assigned. Publish container name is ARCUS. I can enter a description here if I want. I can see a connection ID. I can see the source container type, the source container table, and other information here. Every container must have what is called an expression before it can be queried on by the report manager. So the next thing that I'm going to do after creating my container is I have to assign an expression to this container. To create an expression to this container, I am going to right click on my container, in this case, as uh, AR cuffs. And what I'm going to do here in this case is I'm going to click on Add Expressions. Right now it's a single container that I'm querying off of. I could have multiple containers in there, don't forget. Um, I'm going to click on Add Expressions. Now I can use, uh, now I can define the appropriate expressions here. I can, it can be a data field where I specify the appropriate fields in the table. It could be a SQL expression rather than a data field. Why would I want to use a SQL expression? Well, let's say that I want to use a pivot table, for example, and I want to be able to link, um, let's say, for example, uh, an item name and an item number together, such that it shows up neatly in my, in my pivot table. Uh, there's where I might want to use a, a SQL expression um, to create a new field, essentially. I can use an Excel formula, and I can also 
the use of pass-through variables. Tomorrow we're going to have a look at pass-through variables. Okay, data fields. Uh, I'm going to start off simple here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data field here. So basically I'm going to specify what fields are going to be on that table. Remember we're still in the connector view. Okay, so what do I want to see in this table? I need to be able to see the customer ID, the customer name, and all relevant address. So we've all done this before, probably when tinkering with crystal reports, so I'm simply going to select the appropriate report names here. So I want my name cost, I want my address, my city, my state. One of the things that you should remember here, um, if you're using crystal reports, it is possible for you to do things like group um, or sort uh, information that does not exist in the database. That's not really true here with, uh, with Act-Back Intelligence. So for example, if I was looking at invoices or if I wanted to be able to sort based on country, you do have to add them here uh, to uh, my query. And I'll have a phone number. I'll play with that later on. And I can have the balance. And this is probably good enough here. Okay, so right now I'm creating my container. All of these fields are going to exist within my container. So again, when I select any of these um, fields, you'll notice that again, it uh, all of the relevant properties is going to appear on my right-hand pane. So this is uh, the balance due. If I wanted to be able to do things such as rename uh, these fields, it is possible for me to do. So for example, if I want to rename this field, it is possible for me to do here. And the advantage with renaming this field is that when it uh, goes to my report manager, it actually can appear on my spreadsheet uh, using these English terms here. Can we add more fields after? Yeah. Where? Mm -hmm. Go back and select more afterwards. Go back well, and um, it gives me totally blank one. If I click where, add. Add expression. Mm -hmm. That's an expression versus a. Quickly do this here. Exactly. Because if you see, it gets blank one. Oh. Let's see if it doesn't show up. Well, right, that expression would probably put a name in yourself for your expression. And hopefully, you can build on it. When you're at home tonight, I actually want you to go ahead and do this if you're not doing this with me right now. Oh, this is for a view or is this for a... That's for the table that you have selected. That you mm -hmm. won't be able to change the selection of the fields. Can you ask him? What's that? If you select mm. it, uh, fields, mm -hmm. ask him, can I add more fields? So to I the essentially address? rename the, uh, the appropriate fields here. How can I add more fields? You are no longer muted. Okay, so now that I've got the appropriate fields here, uh, I'm finished with my uh, connector component here at this point in time. You are no longer muted. I'm going to come back to this later on. Ian, can you add fields here? It is possible for me to add fields here as well, yes. So if I wanted to be able to um, add a field, or let's say combine any of these fields that is possible for me to do, uh, what I can do is I can add an expression. I can uh, specify the appropriate uh, uh, expression here. Can I add fields from the database? Um, if I wanted to add fields to the database, what I need to actually do is go back to the container itself. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So if I wanted the fax number, well, I have to go back to the con I have to actually go back to the container here, and what I want to do is I want to add an expression. Okay. Okay. 
Um, but if I wanted to combine fields or uh, create a SQL statement that will uh, parse the data that resides here uh, to, to add field, to combine fields, for example, uh, it is possible for me to do. And as a matter of fact, we can even do that in a different exercise. You are now muted. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to at this point close down my connector. We're going to come back into the connector again and we can talk about other things. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to close down our connector. <clears throat> All right, so what do we do? We, one, we established a connection to our database using uh, the connector component. The connector component does two things. It, it uh, creates a connection to the database, and the other thing that it does is that it also um, you also have to create a, a container. So the appropriate container is held by the uh, the connector. Every container must have a expression. So we've created an expression for the container. The second thing that we're going to do is we are going to, obviously we have to be able to report off of that data in the connector. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the report manager function To get that information over. And a report manager. What do we have in the report manager? Let's have a quick peek at the report manager and its interface. Um, so again, the report manager very, very similar to the uh, connector interface. It's almost identical. As a matter of fact, I have my objects tab, my properties tab. Uh, if I wanted to do uh, find out more information on my object tab, on my home tab, I can right click here and I can select um, properties. You'll notice that the properties is already defined here, but if I wanted to see this float, I can select properties, and what it's going to do is it can have the properties icon floating here. And that's true for all of the icons. Okay, so I'm going to begin by uh, double clicking under home. There's a few other things here that I can talk about. I might talk about them later on. Um, basically, under my report manager, what I can see here are the folders that house the, uh, the built in reports by default. I'm going to assume that there are no other uh, reports that exist here except for the reports that came with the system. Okay, but what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to, I'm trying to create a, a newly customized report that's going to show me a customer list. So what I can do is I, I might want to begin by creating my own folder. If I right click under home, I'm going to click on add folder. It's asking me to specify a name for the folder. I'm going to double click on Ian's reports. Right now, there's nothing under Ian's reports, so I can't see anything underneath that folder here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to begin by creating a uh, report. To create a report, I can click on this folder here and I can click on this Add Report button. My preference is to right click on that report and I can click, simply click on Add uh, Report. I mean, this mouse is not very good. <laughs> Again. So add a report. I can create three different types of reports. I can create a standard report, a union report, and a cube report. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a standard report. I'm going to come back to those options again later on. I'm asked to specify a name for the report. So I'm going to give the report a name. I can call it customer list. Now when I create my report, I do have to specify a data container. What does the data container have? Well, the data container has the appropriate expressions um, that has the fields that will be made available to me from the report manager. I did create a container called uh, customer. Customer information. Okay, so when I look at my uh, customer information here, I 
can see a description. I might have wanted to make it a, a better description. How is it connecting to the database? Well, again, that connector is part of that connector is part of the connector. Well, it's connecting to the database using SageAct Pack Connector, the SageAct Pack Auto Connect function. I'm going to click on OK. Now, these are the fields that are currently available to me. My balance due, customer contact, customer name. Immediately, you're going to notice that it is that, that what I'm actually viewing here are aliases for those uh, database fields. I'm going to click on Select All, and I'm going to click on OK. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, my reports now. So I've added the appropriate fields to my report. So under, under reports, I have my report name, which is customer list. When I click on my customer list, what do I see? There are the appropriate options here under my customer list. I'll talk more about those later on. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to double click on my customer list. Under my customer list, I see my source container. Well, I don't see it yet, but there's something here called source container. I can see my columns, my filters, parameters, sort of fields, and I also have aggregate filters. You might notice that these objects that appear under my customer list also appear in tabs on my right-hand pane. I can see the source container, for example. The source container is going to be the customer list that I've created. If I double-click on customer information, so if I double-click on source container, this is what I see. It's possible for me to actually drill down to the source container. Again, we'll have a look at that later on. Um, what I'm interested in knowing now is what uh, columns am I going to include on that report. So if I double-click on columns, I can see the columns that were, in fact, already added to that report. So it's my balance due, customer contact, etc. If I click on any of these columns, again, on the right-hand pane, I can see the appropriate properties here. I can see the sequence number, the name under aggregate functions. I can choose uh, an aggregate function here. I'm going to leave it at none for now. Omit, the gr omit from group by. I can put a check mark in this box if I needed to. Source expression name, source expression ID. I can see all of this information here as well. I may or may not need this information when I'm designing future reports. Okay, so that's uh, true with all of these columns that currently exist. So again, right now, um, if I was to run this report, all of these columns, all of these fields, the data is all going to be listed on the report. Filters, if I wanted to apply uh, filters, it is possible for me to do so. Um, I can choose to filter here if I wanted to, uh, or I can filter in Excel. If I wanted to apply filters, for example, if I wanted to look at uh, only customers that have an X, whose balance is over an X number, it's possible for me to do by applying a filter. To add a filter, um, I can right click and I can select add filters, or alternatively I can click here at Adding a filter is fairly straightforward. Um, right click Add Filters. I can specify the field that I wish to filter. I can click on OK, and I can specify the appropriate filter. I'm not going to filter any fields in this case. Obviously, it's possible for me to filter this back in my connector. When I built my container, I could also filter information there as well. And again, I'll talk more about that later on. I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of uh, creating filtering fields or, or using formulas to compute the appropriate fields later on. Um, parameters, if I wanted to be able to define parameters, it's possible for me to do. Um, so for example, why would I want to use a parameter? Well, for example, at report runtime, I might want to enter uh, in certain filter values. So, for example, I want to see only customers whose balance is X at the time of report runtime. Uh, so, if that was the case, what I can do is I can create and configure a parameter. These parameters are also used when you create path through variables. Um, if you use drill down, 
uh, you'll, you can also use parameters to send information from the main report to another report. Uh, to create a parameter, I can click on Add Parameters. Uh, for example, it can be, let's say I want to see all of the, uh, all of the customers from A through C. I can click on a parameter. Learn on this site, you see, but it's going to be between a certain value at report runtime. So I can click on OK, and I can specify the appropriate information here, or if I want, I can just click on OK. We'll again have a look at that later on. Sort fields, if you want to sort, it's possible for you to do. Aggregate filters, the same sort of a thing. Again, I won't uh, have I won't have a look at those right now. I think they're fairly straightforward. Okay, so what do I have? What do we see right now in our report manager? Again, when we have a look at our report manager, what does the report manager do? Uh, the report manager is a tool that's used to actually determine what data goes from the database over to Microsoft Excel. Using the report manager, uh, what I can do is I can apply the appropriate, I create the appropriate report, and I specify what fields are coming from the container over to Microsoft Excel. I can choose to specify if any of these, any of those values need to be sorted. Um, let's have a look again at our customer list. If I double click on customer list and have a look at my filters, or I'm sorry, not my filters, but if I have a look at my customer list here, uh, if I have a look at my columns, I have double click on columns here. When I double click on columns here, I can see the column tab here. Hmm. This is the order in terms of where that information is going to appear on my Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> so what am I going to do? Um, customer number can come first, so I can drag it up to the top. I'll follow by my customer name. I also have the appropriate move up, move down buttons on my left hand side. contact. This isn't what I thought I was pulling over. But I had an address and all that stuff in here as well, but this is fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do here um, at this point in time, I have all the information needed to get that information over to um, Microsoft Excel. What can I do? Well, what I can do is I can run this report. To run the report, what I want to do is I want to highlight the report. When I highlight the report, you'll notice that this Run button becomes available on the toolbar. So when certain objects are highlighted, I might not be able to, for example, I can't really run a column, so obviously, um, appropriate functions on my toolbar become disabled. When I'm able to run the report, I highlight the report that I wish to run. Again, it's called customer list. And I'm now able to run this report. When I, when I run this report, what happens is that a brand new workbook is created. I'm going to click on the run button now. <coughs> and again, as you can see, I can see all of the appropriate statistics underneath in, the, in this column here. And right off the bat, I can see the information appearing here in my spreadsheet. One of the things that you need to know is that when this report is generated, <coughs> data is always written to a worksheet on the left-hand side. Always. So what you want to do is you want to refrain from making any modifications uh, to any of the data that resides here on the left-hand side normally. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to ignore that uh, warning and we can actually go ahead and format our report here as necessary. So again, generally speaking, <laughs> it's a bad idea. It's, it's considered bad practice uh, for you to He's saying you don't normally. Uh, resize the columns here because of the fact that if you make modifications on sheet one in this case, 
when the report is generated, all of those modifications will be overwritten by uh, the program. It might be better practice, for example, for you to copy the information uh, that resides here. We'll have a look at the more advanced uh, topics on doing this later on. But I would, I would actually go ahead and do this on a, a different worksheet. So at this point in time, what I can actually do is I can actually uh, make the appropriate modifications here. Um, so I can format the worksheet as how I want it, as how I see fit here.
Yeah, I'm going to write, that's right. I can right-click on the customer list. And then you're going to go down to create link template. I'm going to create a link template. This, I didn't save this book, so it's called book one, which is fine. So basically it's looking for the name of the, um, of the file uh, that's currently open. The contents of the second worksheet is going to be clicked first. Is this okay? I'm going to click on yes. And I'm going to specify uh, the template that I'm going to uh, use. You can use any of these templates here. Just be aware of the limitations that 2000 I have this would be 2007. I'm going to click on OK. Specify the template name. Again, by, by default, the name of my template is equal to the name of my the name of my report. Compatibility checker comes up because it's Excel 2007. All right, so now it's um, now it's run. Okay, so the next time that I run this report, again I'm in my report viewer. I can make any changes with that. I I can add. We can pretend new data was added in the database. I'm going to click on run. When I run the report, look what happens here. Again, I can immediately see this sheet. The reason why this sheet is on is that the sheet was active. Uh, so I, I can immediately run this report, and it's now here in Microsoft Excel. And I can work with the data like I normally would in, in Microsoft Excel. Does anybody have any questions on, um, on, creating, this, on, on creating a report? Lisa, Chuck, any questions from you? I hope you're getting something out of this. No, oh, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Okay, and Dennis? You are no longer muted. Okay, so hopefully you guys are getting some of this. Maybe this might be a good place to uh, uh, break for a little bit of lunch and water. And uh, what we'll do, uh, again, we're going to have a look at this. We're going to look at creating more reports uh, after break. I'm going to show you the report manager um, and the uh, connector components in more detail. We're going to create links to multiple tables. And uh, maybe we can show you some tips and tricks in Microsoft okay. Excel as well. Stuff should be a piece of cake for you, right, Andrew? Great for lunch. We'll resume right. here again in one hour. Piece of cake, right? Oh, and have a good lunch. And I will see everyone then. I'm going to actually disconnect.